Alright, hey guys, and welcome back to a new episode in this blind playthrough we're doing of Trigger Happy Havoc. Um, I'm not completely sure, but I do think we're going to be starting the uh, whole investigation process this episode. Because we already found the two bodies, and now they're uh, gone. They're disappeared. Uh, so, yeah, we have to go looking for them, basically. Where do I have to go looking? Uh, not quite sure, to be honest. Um, so I guess I'll just aimlessly look around, see if I find anything suspicious or noteworthy, and hold on to that information, I guess. Let's see. Okay, these two are here, let's talk to them. Maybe they have something. Uh, we need to search for the bodies that have disappeared. What happens after that? We don't know yet. Still placing my bets on uh, on Celeste being behind all of this. Well, I guess we'll see. Where could two dead bodies have disappeared to? I mean, I'm really curious about the hammers. It's locked, huh? I wonder why it's locked though. I think I think the hammers that were used for the Justice robot are from there, and they were decorated to look like different hammers, right? Like the wooden wooden mallets, or whatever you call those. Uh, where else should we go to? I don't know. Should we visit some... Let me just go check the rec room, just because. Should we maybe visit some classrooms? Could they maybe be in some classrooms? I don't know. No one seems to be here. The wooden mallet is still down there. I'm guessing... Uh, yeah, this is the way out. Let's go down. No, let's let's check these classrooms. And then I'll go down. Let's see what's here, then. Maybe there's nothing here. But, you know, you can never be too sure, I suppose. What could the bodies have gone to? I'm trying to think if they gave us, like, a hinder... Oh, never mind. Oh, uh, why are you just standing there? We need to get to the repository. Huh, you mean... Okay, kind of weird that Celeste found them, but whatever. Uh, what's the repository? Jonah. I don't remember what the repository is. Is the repository where the extra art stuff is? I don't know. I don't know what the repository is. back there. Oh, it is the rip- I, I, I was right, the game just didn't let me go in because the door was locked. I'm too smart for the game. I'm gonna regret those words, but whatever. Uh, then I have no choice but to go inside. Alright. So I opened the door, and when I entered, I saw. Abiyakuya is pretty tall. Even if we're hunched over. Uh, the two bodies that had disappeared were right there. The smell of blood made me gag. What I saw before my eyes was unquestionable, unavoidable, unwavering reality. And then I heard the announcement for the second time. Mamakuma again. Go ahead and fix this. Uh, just incline it a little bit. Yeah, I think that's better. Body has been discovered. Okay. Okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. All right. Well then, uh, now that we've found the bodies, all that's left is to uncover the culprit. Hold on. How can you be so calm? I mean, they're dead, you know? Dead. Gone forever. They're never coming back. Awful. This is all just too awful. Hina suddenly burst into tears. She clutched at Hifumi's lifeless body. What? 
Large wet tears fell from her eyes. The tears landed on Hifumi's cheeks. Uh, if this were some kind of make-believe, that might have been when Hifumi opened his eyes. But this wasn't a movie. He's not completely dead yet. I called that. I called that last episode. I thought he had walked out, but I don't know. That doesn't seem the case, but he's not completely dead. His eyes closed, and they never opened again. Death for the second time. Absolute, undeniable death. No matter how many more of Hina's tears splashed his face, there was no second miracle. Reality set in again. This isn't some stereotypical fantasy world. Tears can't restore a person's vitality. You have no tears, do you? No blood in your veins. No calcium in your bones. At least, you have your meat. You're just angry. Going out of his way to return just to leave us with those unnecessary dying words. Now, this game has been exceedingly boring. He said Yasuhiro, right? Yasuhiro Hagakure. That is the only person he could have been referring to. And with that, the case is solved. Assaulting people and even killing Taka and Hifumi. And then going so far as to hide their bodies. A criminal that hides his face behind a mask and uses a bunch of giant wooden hammers. Is that what Hiro is? I don't think it is. If it's true, I can't forgive him. No way can I ever forgive him. To kill two of our friends. Anyway, it's about time we track down the culprit in our little life or death game here. Although, this time it's not all that life or death. The trial will conclude without much trouble. Yes, it does look that way. It's going to begin again. We have to go through this one more time. I have to accept it. I have no choice but to go through with this. To make sure everyone survives. I just have to do it. Investigation. Nice. First, I'd better check the Monokumo file. The victims were Hifumi Yamada and Kiyotaka Ishimaru. The cause of death for each was a blow to the head. It is thought that they were both killed with a similar weapon. That's it? Yeah, it's pretty strange. We get way less information this time than before. That is no problem. After all, the events of this case unfolded before our very eyes. We should know more about what happened than the Monokumo file could anyway. Maybe... There's something else that's bothering me. Someone else has been missing for quite a while. Are, are you talking about Kyoko? Without a doubt. She has an alibi for when Celeste and Hifumi were attacked. But what if the killer wasn't acting alone? What if they had an accomplice? An accomplice? An accomplice? What are you doing here? Don't be rude. I'm here to answer your question. What question? You're talking about accomplices, right? 
I'm pretty sure I explained it before, didn't I? During the first class trial. So basically, you can be an accomplice if you want, but there's no gratification in it. Are you saying nobody worked together this time either? Okay. Um, I just want to make sure you don't forget no matter how much you might assist in a murder, only one black Indian can graduate. An accomplice gets nothing. Then we only need to figure out who that one black and is that did the killing, right? Just like normal. Okay, okay, let me take this opportunity to clarify the whole shebang. In this class trial, what you need to determine is the one true black end who devised the murder plot and put it into action. The true black end. So, just one person. That's enough for explanifying. Now it's done. Now it's down to the final battle between all of you. At the black end. Good luck to all the contestants. Okay, based on what he just said, I'm... Uh, I'll, I'll explain it later, I guess. So there can only be one black end, an accomplice wouldn't benefit. Then I can't see any way Kyoko would be connected to this case after all. You may be right. <laughs> if that's true, then Kyoko, where are you? As long as she's not connected to the case, it doesn't matter. Let's get back to the investigation. I have absolutely no doubt that Hiro is responsible. But for the time being, I suppose, <clears throat> I suppose it can't hurt to pursue further information. You know, don't you think we should consider a certain someone suspect just in case? I'm talking about the murderous fiend, Genocide Jack. When did you... <laughs> I've been looking all over for you, master. When I woke up, you were nowhere to be found. Milk sex, cover girl. Well, true. Yeah. Uh, when we heard Hifumi scream, she was with me. And when the bodies disappeared, she was still lying unconscious in the appointment room. Plus, Taco's body aside, I can't imagine any way she could have been able to move Hifumi's body. Besides, I calculate every move I make. I'm not gonna kill someone when everyone knows what I look like. They don't call me the murderous fiend for nothing. On another topic, should we post a guard by the bodies like before? We can't have them disappearing again. Hina and I can handle that. You don't mind, do you, Hina? Sure. I'd be totally useless on the investigation anyway. Then that's that. Let's begin. This whole thing is so strange. All but one of us has an alibi, so figuring out who did it should be obvious, right? But maybe it's just me, but I don't think it's going to be as straightforward as it seems. Monokuma file number 3 has been added. Okay, going back to what Monokuma said, I'll say it real quickly so this episode isn't very long. Uh, he gave us a hint. He told us that it was... we had to find the true black and one. The true mastermind behind the whole criminal case. Which uh, gives me the idea that the person that killed both of these is different. So... Um, First of all, one of these two killed the other. That's my, my guess. And then, the actual blackened one is the one that built this murderous scenario. And that true blackened one is Celeste. I'm just gonna go with that, for now. Why? Because I've always thought that Celeste would be like a really calculated murderer, and she's probably going to try and build a really complex scenario. Because that's where she thrives as, as a person. If this is a complex scenario, then it makes it more difficult for us. But it doesn't make it more difficult for her because she's so good at lying. It's basically trying to hunt a, a wild animal of their natural habitat. We don't know the habitat, but they do. And I think that's what Celeste is trying to do. He's trying to manipulate the situation so it's much easier for her. So I think it's Celeste. Now let's go. Uh, Hifumi's big, cold body is laying on the floor. His really big body. I mean, how on earth was the killer able to move someone so big? From the nurse's office where he was discovered to here, the repository. 
all the way from the first floor to the third floor, and all without anyone noticing it. How the hell? It's no good. I just don't get it. I can think about it later, for now I have to finish investigating Hifumi himself. If I remember correctly, Hifumi's fatal injury was also a blow to the head, probably from Justice Hammer number 3, which was laying on the floor in the nurse's office. Huh? Wait. Something's off about his body. Why am I getting this feeling? Something's different. Something about Hifumi's body in the nurse's office versus his body right now. That's it. His glasses. When his body was in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered with blood. But now they're completely clean. Does that mean someone wiped his glasses off? But who would do that and why? Okay, that's really weird though. They probably used this thing, right? It's Dolly, it doesn't have a handle. I saw this in the art room before, I guess it's used to move statues around. It's kind of awkward, but if you bend down, it's not too hard to use. Huh? But wait. Wasn't this in the equipment room where we found Taka's body? It was. And look at the wheel. There's a blood stain on it. So there's blood on the wheel of the dolly that was moved from the equipment room to the repository. What's the explanation for that? Repository dolly has been added to the truth. Okay. Let's get this dude. Taka will never move again. According to the Manakuma final, Taka died from a blow to the head. He, we found Justice Hammer number 4 near his body in the equipment room. Is that what was used to kill him? And there's a tarp laid out under his body. Did the killer use this to move Tonka's body? That way, there wouldn't be any blood left behind while the body was moved. Interesting. Hammers. There are hammers of all different sizes hanging on the wall, although some are more like mallets. Could the Justice Hammers have been designed using these as a model? Either way, all the hammers here have obviously seen a lot of use. They're all covered in debris and chalky stone powder. Wait. For some reason, this one hammer isn't dirty at all, and it's wet. Did someone wash it recently? Spotless hammer, okay. Let's talk to Hina real quick. Hey, I'm Makoto. I've been thinking about something. It's about the repository. What is it? After Hifumi and Taka's body disappeared, we split up and looked around, right? It was really... I was really scared, so me and Sakura stuck together. And we came right to the repository too, you know? Look around. But when we got here, the repository was locked. We couldn't get inside. And we came here as soon as the search started, so there's no way someone could have beat us here. So if that's true, then who locked it, and why is it unlocked now? The door was locked when the search for the bodies began, but now it's wide open. There might be some secret lurking in there. But I'll probably have to leave this area to figure it out. Uh, nothing to investigate. Let's talk to Sakura. There are many aspects to the incident this time. Too many, to be honest. Considering that, it may be a good to look back on everything that's happened. Would you like my help? Sure. Yeah, let's go back on things. Uh, this morning, only four of us met up at the dining hall. Hino, Kyoko, you, and myself. We waited for the others, but nobody showed up, so we decided to go look for them. It was around 8 o'clock when we began our search, and soon after we split up, Kyoko disappeared. After that, Hina found Celeste in the rec room on the third floor, then quickly came to get you and me. According to Celeste, she was attacked by a suspicious individual and lay unconscious for about an hour. In other words, she was attacked an hour before we found her, meaning just after 7 o'clock. Based on the picture Celeste took, we discovered her attacker was dressed in a strange costume. It was Robo Justice. It also became clear that this Robo Justice had dragged Hifumi away. Uh, after meeting up with Togo and Byakuya, we began searching for the costume assignments. We found an injured Hifumi in the library on the second floor. We took him down to the nurse's office on the first floor, then resumed our search. Uh, but not long after leaving the nurse's office... Uh, okay. Based on Celeste's claims, we went back up to the second floor, where we split up and began searching. Then, right after that, Celeste screamed, this time she had apparently seen the suspect on the third floor. Hearing her screams, we quickly made our way to the third floor. Uh, Celeste, what's wrong? She's basically trying to trick us. She's using all this manipulation to trick us, to make it really difficult. She's like mixing things up, she's still making us go from down to up and to the middle floor and everything. Just to make it more difficult for us to 
stay against her once the trial comes. Um, and then... Okay. At that point, we decided to split into two groups. Celeste, Hina, and I went back to the nurse's office. Meanwhile, you, Byakuya, and Toko pursued the subsidy, okay? And when we got back to the nurse's office, we found Hifumi's corpse, which was laying on the ground, okay? I left Celeste and Hina alone and headed back to the third floor to tell the others what had happened. Uh, but at the same time, we had discovered Sorry. Taka's body in the equipment room, which means Hifumi and Taka's body were discovered right around the same time. Because I remember hearing the body discovery announcement play right after finding Taka. Uh, and that's when I showed up and told you and Byakuya that Hifumi had been killed, right? Then you and me and Byakuya all headed back to the nurse's office, leaving behind Taka and... okay. But as soon as we fought the physics lab, we ran into Celeste, who'd arrived to tell us something very unusual. The body was gone. Um, we hurried back to the nurse's office, discovered his corpse was fine, uh, okay. Then we remembered we had abandoned, okay, we back, okay. Alright. This time, Taco's body had disappeared. So from there, we began our search for both of the missing bodies. And after some time, Celeste told us she found the bodies and we all head to the repository. And there we discovered the bodies in Bash. Okay. And that brings us up to now. Okay. Let's talk to this dude and then leave. Uh, Byakuya, do you think Hiro really did it? I don't see how anyone could think otherwise. When the attacks and murders and disappearances all happened, everyone had an alibi. And the last thing Hifumi said when he died. Uh, then there's no room to suspect anyone else. Okay, but if he did do it, why would he hide his identity with that weird costume? Maybe he thought that no matter what happened, he'd be safe as long as his face was covered. Because he's the fool of the century, you see. I mean, he is kind of dumb. But do you really think that's enough to explain it? I feel like there's a clue hiding in there somewhere. And is that it? That's all the, that bothers you about this case? Well, no, there are a few other things. Like, why did the killer try to hide the bodies? They probably figured that if we couldn't find the bodies, we couldn't complete our investigation. But if that's the case, we found the bodies pretty easily, didn't we? Again, it comes back to the fact that the culprit was a moron. Is that really all there is to it? The other thing that bothers me is why they bother killing two people. Because all the rule says is if you can kill someone and get away with it, you graduate, right? So if you're the killer, your number one priority is not getting caught. But killing two people means more clues, more chances you'll get found. I see, so that... So, well, okay. Don't talk to me as yeah, if we're friends. What's with the attitude? But you have my appreciation. <laughs> Thanks to you, I yeah, might have yeah. some fun with this after all. His mysterious words hung in the air and he left his report story. He talked as if he'd figured something out. But if he did, what he... Okay. I'm leaving. Uh, the Lurekina said it was locked. There's definitely a lock on the door, but it can only be locked from the inside. So, Hifumi was with uh, Celeste on this and locked the door from the inside. I don't see any way to lock it from in the art room. The door can only be locked from inside the repository, which makes me wonder. Hina and Sakura confirmed that the door was locked, and the door was just okay. When Hina checked it, someone had already gone in the repository and locked the door. When they were done, they unlocked it and left, which is why it's unlocked now. But Hino claims that there's no way someone could have beaten them to the repository. So, that means only Hifumi could have done it because he's alive. Or he was alive, at least. Maybe you should check somewhere else. There are some places I already know about. First, the nurse's office where Hifumi was found, then the equipment room where Tonka was found. Alright, I'm heading to the equipment room first because, uh, because it's closer. Right, so I'll just head there. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the equipment room. Alright. I do want to know what's up with Kyoko. I don't think she partake, uh, she, did, she, she took any part in this uh, whole thing, whole mess. But I don't know where she is. I don't know what she's up to. She's probably going around Taking the advantage that everyone's messed up to find uh, Alter Ego, maybe. Maybe. Okay, what is this? Planks of wood or something? Oh, the tarp. 
I feel like I've seen it somewhere before. It's like the tarp they used for the thing. There's some kind of tire marks going through the pool of blood in the middle of the room. That reminds me about the dolly in the repository. There was blood on the tires. Could that blood have come from here? Which would, which could mean that Taka's body was moved from the equipment room to the repository using the dolly. Both rooms are on the third floor, so that should definitely have been possible. Okay. But even if the dolly was used to move Taka's body, what about Hifumi? Hifumi's body was in the nurse's office on the first floor. Even with Dolly, there's no way to get it up to the third floor. It's still a total mystery. I think Hifumi got up, he was alive, he came, he took Taka to the repository, locked himself in, played dead for a while, and then unlocked, and when Celeste came in and everything, and boom. Just as hammer number four, the weapon that was used to kill Taka. The body was moved, but the murder weapon was just left here. Okay. How about you? Uh, I was sleeping right here when the killer carried the body away. I'm super... Okay, I missed the trip. Okay. Uh, let's go to the nurse's office then. Then we'll come back to, to everything up here. Because we also have to go to the rec room for the other hammer. And to the library for the other hammer. So yeah, there's quite a few amount of hammers. There are quite a... yeah. Where is the stairs? Over here. Alright. I love the background music for Investigation. It's so chill. I don't know, it's kind of like a mixture of jazz and, and blues and I don't know. It feels really good. To the ear. Okay, here's his office. Let's see. Is anyone here? It's Celeste, huh? Just as number three, the one that was used to kill Hifumi. Someone moved the body but left the weapon behind. Okay. What are you investigating, Celeste? I am not investigating anything, precisely speaking. I am simply going around seeing if Hito might be hiding somewhere. What about you? Oh, you know, I'm just checking this and that. The main thing on my mind is how someone could have moved Hifumi's body. Uh, when it disappeared, you were supposed to be in the nurse's office, right? Correct. Hina was not feeling well, so I stayed behind to look after her. But she seems to be getting she seemed to be getting worse, so I took her to the bathroom. And when you got back, the body was gone. We could not have been gone for more than a minute or two, though. So then the killer was able to get in and move Hifumi's body in that short amount of time. It would seem so. To carry off someone as big as Hifumi in only a couple of minutes is... I can't think of it as anything less than impossible. Alright. Can I check the hammer again? Maybe? Uh, nothing interesting. Alright, can I check the blood? I guess not. Is there anything else interesting here? Not really. Uh, I feel like there's more to look around here. Okay, there's more. What else? The fridge? Uh, maybe there's something... There's a bunch of... Could Hifumi have used fake blood? And thus, that's how he... Oh. Maybe. Maybe there's fake blood. It's too small to be a handkerchief. It's a glasses cleaning cloth. It's Hifumi's glasses cleaning cloth. And it's got something kind of cartoon character on it. But it's all covered in blood. Ah, oh, did you find something? Yeah, there was a cleaning cloth in the trash can. A cleaning cloth. Huh? And it's all bloody. Whoever this belonged to must have used it to wipe some blood. But who, who would need to do something like that? I have the slightest idea. Yeah, me either. But I think it might be important. Now I can leave. Nice. So, let me... Oh. So this is where you were. I've been looking for you. You have. 
I wanted to take you, uh, thank you for what you did. No matter, not that you meant to, but you ended up making this little game of ours very interesting indeed. Uh, you should go to Hito's room. Oh, and let me give you this. This is the note Hito wrote to get us all to meet up, right? You remember well. <laughs> well, the penmanship was pretty remarkable, so it left an impression. Anyway, this makes it clear, right? This is a trap. What is? Things grow ever more exciting. Um, what are you talking about? I've already repaid my debt. I don't owe you any more explanation. Goodbye. Okay. Um, so he said to go to Hiro's room, but what's waiting for me there? Alright. Let's head over to Hiro's room then. Dun, 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 dun. I wonder what that could actually mean. What role does Hiro have in all of this? And which one is Hiro's room? This is Hifumi. Here he is. The door is unlocked. I guess I can go inside. Yokuya did say to go look. It might not be a great idea, but I'm not gonna... Okay. Oh, he has a lot of things in here. Why is my room so dull? This is Hiro's room. There's all kind of weird stuff in here. Where'd he even get it all from? More importantly, he still hasn't turned up. Which means he can't really complain if I don't get his permission to search his room, right? Boxes. I think there's something in the cardboard box. Oh. It's blueprints for something. And... The something's made out of... It looks like cardboard. Plastic and... Plaster. Is this Robo Justice? And it's in Hito's room. But wait. These blueprints. Something about them bothers me. The... Oh, they're written in really bad writing. So... It, Someone implanted this here. Alright, Robo Justice Blueprints has been added to the Truth Bullet section. I don't think there's anything else important, we'll just search things up just in case. No, oh, never mind, let's just leave, I guess. Whatever. Big news, big news. What's wrong? We found Kyoko. What? Is she okay? Where is she? Uh, wait. I wasn't done. There's more big news. Robo Justice showed up too. It's Hiro wearing the costume. Anyway, as soon as you can, head to the pool on the second floor. Anyway, I have to head to the pool. Okay. Interesting. Things get interesting. They're way over there. Alright. <sighs> I have had the worst day. Kido. Let's see. Um, Kido. Yeah, duh. Who else would I be? Um, that's a good question. Why do we look like this? Did someone come along and remodel me while I was sleeping? Was it the Illuminati? <laughs> do I have to talk to Kyoko now? Okay. It was jammed into the pool locker room. <laughs> into the pool room locker. It looked like he was fast asleep, so I kicked him and woke him up. <laughs> you could have been a little more gentle about it. Like, I don't know, caress my face or something. That's creepy. Anyway, Kyoko, where have you been all this time? You just disappeared all of a sudden without a trace. There was something I had to check up on. What do you mean? Never mind. I can't. Never mind. Never mind. More importantly, uh, she says that, but she, but does she have any idea? Does she know people think she might be spying for the mastermind? First of all, Hiro, you need to explain to us why you're dressed like that. Oh, uh, well, I mean, I have no idea. One second I was asleep, don't even know how that happened. Then I woke up, and then I was here. I don't care. Do something about that costume. It pains me just to look at you. Well, um, I don't know what's up with this thing, but I can't actually get it off. A little help? Why would you make something that you can't take off by yourself? 
I didn't make this stupid freaking thing. There's a clasp on the back that, that's keeping you from getting it off. It looks pretty sturdy. I don't think uh, you can get it off on your own. We don't really have a choice. Let's help him. Took everyone's help, but slowly we were able to get Hiro out of the suit. Took a few minutes, but eventually we got all the pieces off. Free at last. Isn't it kind of weird how perfectly the suit fits Hiro? More to the point, nobody but Hiro would be able to wear that costume. Wait, what? Hold on a second. Don't bother trying to act innocent. The blueprints were in your room as well. In other words, it is obvious to everyone that you made this costume. That's true, I saw the blueprints myself. Yeah, me too. Then it's obvious, the one who put this costume on and went around attacking everyone was Hiro. Shall we tie him up and gag him? <laughs> Good idea. You wouldn't want him killing anyone else. Hold on, guys. I don't think that's going. A I think that's going a little far. He may be a suspect, but he deserves fair treatment. Yeah, I mean, attacking blueprints. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. You can't talk your way out of this. It's been decided. You killed them. What killed who? I have no idea what you're talking about. There must be a fake hero running around. You're the only one who can wear this costume. So who else could possibly be the costume attacker? How do you know I'm the only one? Maybe you should try it on for yourself before you convict me. <sighs> Fine, if you're gonna be a jerk about it, I will. Uh, without missing a bit, Hina started putting on the Robo Justice, Justice costume. <laughs> and the costume is a two two-piece thing, right? A uh, two-person thing, because if the clench is on the back, how do you get it on without someone else putting it on? In half, Hina took the suit back off again. Well, now you're all out of excuses. No, see, it's because you're a girl. It was another guy then. <laughs> Against my will, I picked up the pieces off the floor and tried putting them on. It's no good. The arms are too long. There's no way I can wear this. See, I told you it was impossible. You are absolutely right. It seems this costume was made to fit Hito's body exactly. Then there's another costume. They might they must have one that looks the same. But fits them. If you insist on this line of defense, then show us some evidence. Evidence. You claim there is another suit, yes, then you must find it and show it to us. Who cares? Hito's the only one without an alibi during this whole thing anyway. Which is how we know it was him. I mean, is that really true? I have no idea what's been happening. Could someone, like, tell me? Robo Justice costume has been added. Okay. Let's talk to Kyoko, I guess. She looks like she's lost in thought. I don't think she's in the mood to talk. I'd better leave her alone. Alright. Um, if you don't tell me what's going on, how am I supposed to understand? I think I figured out that someone's been killed, right? Well, two people were killed, Taka and Hifumi. <laughs> I did not. Wait, hold on. If those two are the ones that were killed, that's it. I know who did it. You may as well tell us that. Uh, Taka and Hifumi were fighting over Alter Ego, right? Which means Alter Ego and or Chihiro must have done it. I see, that's unfortunate. Huh? Unfortunate? Stop trying to trick us, just admit that you did it, okay? I'm telling you, you got it all wrong. Ah, I know, that note. Last night, someone slipped a weird note under my door. And here's what it said. I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out. So don't tell anyone else for now, let's meet in the rec room at 1am. But the last thing I remember is going to the rec room, then, for some reason, I fell asleep. The killer probably drugged me or something. Not a chance. No, hold on. He could be onto something. 
The nurse's office did have chemicals that could do that. I told you, someone's trying to set me up. A secret passage, a chance to escape, someone wrote all that to trick me. Even if that's true, you must be one dumb fish to bite every piece of bait that floats in front of you. Well, after being trapped here so long, even if you know it's a lie, you still gotta check, right? They preyed on my desire to get out of here. They deceived me. I still don't buy it. Well, you should buy it. Okay, then show us that note. With pleasure. I have it right here in my own pocket. Looks like I lost it. Yeah, sure. Please, you gotta believe me. I wouldn't hurt a fly. As I said before, if you want us to believe you, you must produce evidence. Can you show us the note? I have no particular issue with what you claim, but if you want us to believe you, give us a reason. What the heck, for serious? Yasuki does account. Now then, shall we resume our investigation? There's no time to waste before the class trial begins. Why do we need to keep investigating? We already know who did it. Why? Why did you kill them? Tell us, Hido. No, it's like I said. Was it really to get the money Monokumo offered us? Yeah, that must be it. You must be totally broke, and that's why. Wait, that's a false accusation. Someone help me. Just to be thankful, we haven't bonded a bounding gag dude yet. If you have time to yell and carry on, you have time to search for your evidence, right? Ah, you're right. I need to look for the second suit and that note. Feet don't fail me now. I guess I'd better go get back to guard duty. I was gonna ask Toko or Genocide Jax to switch with me. But if she and Sakura got into a fight, we'd have a, cat a catastrophe on our hands. Well, bye. One by one, everyone peeled away. Makoto, do you have a second? I want you to help me with the investigation. It looks like I got a late start on this one, so I need to make up some ground. Sure, I don't mind helping, but can you promise me something? Later, when we have the time, will you tell me why you disappeared? <laughs> to reject me so simply. Anyway, I need your help. You don't mind, do you? Okay. Uh, thanks. Now then, shall we? So, Makoto, first I'd like to examine the corpses. Examine the corpses? I can't believe I'm hearing that from a girl the same age as me. Dead bodies don't lie, you know. They tell the truth far more easily than the living. Wouldn't you agree? How am I supposed to answer? Anyway, we have to hurry before the class trial begins again. Yeah, you're right. Okay then, show me where the bodies are. They're in the repository, then I guess we should head that way for now. Okay, heading to the repository then. Heading to the repository. Over here, right? Yeah. Let's see. And... Okay. Ifumi and Taka. For a moment, Kyoko seemed to be rigid, but only for a moment. Well then, let's get started. Yeah. She crouched down next, next to Taka and without hesitation began poking and prodding the bodies. The Monokumo file was right, they were killed using similar weapons. Her movements were so smooth she was so calm. Seeing how comfortable she was actually made me feel a little more comfortable. Uh, so do we talk to her? Makoto, I found something. You did? Do you remember the wristwatch Taka always wore on his left hand? <laughs> Are you so oblivious to the people around you? Do you dislike other people that much? No, that's not it. Anyway, you said he had his watch? Take a look. Yeah. It's broken. You can see the hands aren't moving, right? It most likely broke when he had his encounter with his assailant. And if you notice, the hands are frozen at just past 6 o'clock. So that would mean the watch was broken sometime just after 6. But last night, Tucker's watch definitely wasn't broken. Hey, how long have you kept us waiting? Taka's irritated voice, okay. It's almost 10 o'clock. So, if it worked at 10 last night, it couldn't have been broken at 6 p.m. Meaning, it must have happened at 6 this morning. A broken wristwatch has been added to it, okay. And that's not all. Look at Taka's left hand. He appears to be gripping something. You're right, there's something white in there. Can you try and pry it out? Nice. Me. Rigor mortis has already set in. Boys are better suited to 
this kind of manual labor, right? Okay. As much as I didn't want to, I grasped Taco's cold hand. The ice cold hand was nearly enough to cause my heart to stop beating. After some effort, I was finally able to free the object from his tightly clenched fist. A piece of paper. Was that all he had in his hand? Yeah, that's it. Just a little scrap of paper. It doesn't seem like much of a clue, does it? I wonder about that. So Kyoko then turned to Hifumi's body. Let's check Hifumi's body now. Perhaps he's left us a few clues. Okay. So, did you find anything? I did. More than expected, to be honest. Look at this. A wad of paper. Hifumi had it hidden in, on him. Hidden? He stuffed it in his pants, so I can only assume he'd hidden it on purpose, you see? It was just his pants. Not like his socks or something. I don't know what that, what that means. Anyway, let's take a look at the paper. Go ahead, Makoto. Open it up. When I think of how it was stuffed down his pants, it's like... It better be important, Hifumi, or I'll never forgive you for this. A note. Uh, I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Marukumo can't find out, so this is the... okay. That sounds very familiar. That's it. It's the same thing Hido said. Then he was telling the truth. Although it's not exactly the same, is it? Last night someone slept a weird note. He said a uh, 1am, right? But the note says six. Uh, the time the time is different. Hiro told us that his note said to meet at one a.m. But the note they wrote to Hifumi asked him to meet at six a.m. Hold on. Just because Hifumi had the note doesn't mean it was meant for him. Hmm? Part of it has been torn off, right? I think there's likely some meaning there. There's some meaning to part of it being ripped off. Um, could you maybe explain a little more? It was a note directed to Ishimaru. You can't be so stupid, Makoto. Please. <sighs> why, would he, why would he have been clutching that scrap of paper so tightly? I have no idea. What if it wasn't just a scrap of paper? Yeah. When he was holding it, what if it was something more important? And how could someone impor something important like that become a mere scrap of paper? That's what you need to answer. Okay. And while we're at it, I should tell you yeah. one other thing. The two victims this time definitely had their e-handbooks on them. So the handbooks have nothing to do with... Okay. Not that there was any reason to think they were connected to the killings in the first place. So you're saying I don't have to think about the handbooks this time, right? If you didn't have to think about them at all, I wouldn't have gone out of my way to mention it. All I said was that they weren't used to help carry out the murders. There may come a point, however, where a handbook may play a role. I don't think I understand. But if Kiko thinks it's important, I'd better keep it in mind. Okay. Ding dong, bing bong. It's unfortunate, but I suppose this is where our investigation comes to an end. You'll have to figure out the rest for yourself, and come to the proper conclusion. Yeah, you're right. Well, we'd better get going. Okay. Alright. Uh, so this is obviously where I'm going to end the episode, just because next episode will be exclusively dedicated for the trial, which will be like two hours, so yeah. I hope you guys are enjoying this content. Um, I really love doing these videos. I really love this game, and I can't wait to play the other titles in the franchise. Really looking forward to it. So, stay tuned if you're interested. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Visit my social media if you like, or the Discord channel or blog. I leave links to those in the description below. Or leave a comment. You're always welcome to leave a comment. So, yeah. Hope you guys are doing well. Please take care. Love you all. And I guess I'll see you guys next episode. Goodbye. Love you all.